at the Summit X at Tech Storm here in Singapore, uh, Shangri-La Hotel. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Sabrina, who is the uh, head of uh, FinTech and also payments at HBAR. In foundation. The Age of Our Foundation. That's thank right. you so much for having me, Jane. Yeah, thank you, Sabrina. Yes, uh, so, you know, when earlier you were at the panel talking about CBDC, and for our audience, CBDC, of course, is the central bank digital currency, and there's a lot of talk about, you know, what it means and how that will impact people's lives. Um, privacy and other concerns and there's a lot of um, I guess a lot of uh, problems out there that CBDC technology can help solve um, because I think when we talk about blockchain technology everyone gets really excited and think crypto 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 but it's, be it's more than that isn't of it? Of course yeah yes. I mean uh, let's not uh, confuse just blockchain and crypto there are, you know crypto is a subset of blockchain and then CBDC is, is really its own thing in its own right uh, and it's, it's going to solve very meaningful problems, I believe. Uh, financial inclusion is one of them. Of that's course. right, that's right, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, in your sort of projects, uh, working with domestic uh, partners, uh, international partners, you have obviously come across many different types of use cases, including uh, financial inclusion. Can you tell us a bit about you know, the different types of projects and use cases that you have mm -hmm. seen? Absolutely. So in the CBDC space, we're, um, we're working with a company called MTech, uh, which provides a CBDC uh, sandbox, uh, you know, geared towards uh, central banks globally. Uh, they work with a number of uh, governments. Uh, so more recently with the Bank of Ghana, they've uh, run their CBDC hackathon. Uh, what's really cool about their platform is it's open. It's like open finance uh, uh, for CBDCs. So they are API first and, and uh, they're able to support uh, the whole financial ecosystem with startups plugging into uh, their wow. platform, okay. being able to interact with uh, that, that CBDC platform. It, it, it's very meaningful because that means that it could be, uh, CBDC can be incorporated in the greater financial ecosystem uh, providing more value for the users because now, now you can have different types of use cases. It could be B2B, it could be B2C, access to credit, things yeah, like B2B, that. Yeah, B2B, B2C, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. You talk about financial inclusion and uh, many people also say, you know, there's other problems, for example, uh, the payment efficiencies and the cost in the FX market. But uh, what you are thinking about is that financial inclusion is the most meaningful sort of use case when it comes to CBDC. Yes, I mean, obviously there are the, all the efficiency gains of being able to transact 24 seven, getting in and settlement and that's I mean that's very obvious right because uh, financial infrastructure is actually quite dated in many ways uh, so there is the opportunity for, for technology to come in and actually solve that right okay so um, you we so we talk about financial inclusion and also uh, different other use cases um, what are some of the biggest challenges or questions that people have when it comes to the implementation side of it well, it's still very early in the game, right? So not a lot of uh, not a lot of countries have really rolled out in a in a meaningful way, um, and of course, users will have questions about, hey, what does this mean? What what are the implications? Um, uh, they may be wondering about privacy. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I can say from my, my interactions with some central banks or hearing central banks speak about their plans is that privacy is. Um, is top of mind for a number of central banks. Like they are uh, trying to to design around that actually, um, and and yeah, I guess it, it is. This is a question that that keeps on coming back. Uh, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean there's a greater level of control? That's right. Yeah. Um, and it all depends on the intent of, of course, the central bank. Like, what are they what are they trying to solve for? And of course, they want to make sure that there's some adoption. And, and so they have to answer those questions and make sure that designs uh, are compatible with a certain level of privacy. Yeah, there were some discussions that, you know, some implementation could focus around a token-based CBDC or uh, account-based, where account-based will have a more transparent link to your identity, well, whereas token is sort of like, I guess, a crypto token, which is a little bit more anonymous, but still not quite anonymous, is it? It depends, uh, you know, how you're building, obviously, and um, I know that in our ecosystem there, is the, there has been some efforts to provide uh, privacy 
uh, for certain use cases. So um, out of Australia, there is a startup called Not Centralized that's done some work with the Reserve Bank of Australia. Um, and um, their, their product, Layer C, um, allows to have a certain level of privacy in terms of like the, the, the use case that they're serving is more of a um, uh, is more of an escrow service. So they're, they're able to uh, abstract uh, the uh, the balances uh, just to prove that hey there is enough there is enough amount in the account to cover uh, what is needed right, for the right. payment. Mm -hmm. So things like that you can actually build uh, you can build a privacy around around these kinds of products. Yeah. And there's also I, I guess other technologies that's uh, emerging which is on um, zero knowledge proof. I think which uh, one mm -hmm. of the panels uh, was also talking yes, about yeah, right. Yeah. Zero knowledge proof is one of them, and it's something that you can also implement in Hedera because we have a, uh, you know we have an EVM as well, and and so you you would be able to uh, prove that. Um, is, for example, you're over 18 years old um, without actually revealing your birth date, uh, prove that you have a certain balance in your account without, without actually revealing the balance, um, which is very important, right? Because you don't want to actually give away your That's data, right, you yeah. just want to give away enough, uh, enough to be able to transact. That's right, yeah. I think it's also uh, better for the security aspect, in, just in case something gets uh, breached or compromised, Absolutely. then you have yeah, less yeah. to lose as well. Um, so talking about um, the adoption, right, and all, well, talking about all these concerns, there's obviously, you know, also a different conversation about how do we get people to, you know, uh, adopt CBDC, how to address these concerns so that adoption can be, I guess, uh, accelerated in some ways. So what do you see are the, some of the paths towards adoption and what needs to be addressed? That's a great question. I think it's really providing... Um, it's providing the, the value for the end user, right? And uh, I think the governments really are the ones that are going to be pushing the adoption. So they have a lot of leverage. There are a lot of things they can do themselves, but also embracing the greater fintech ecosystem and providing some bridges, developing their CBDC in an open way, which, which brings me back to MTech, where they have an API first platform. And because uh, you know this is the CBDC is just a foundational layer, uh, but what you can do with your money is really uh, going to be dictating whether or not that gets really utilized or not. Um, so an ecosystem first approach, I think, is very important. Um, and and obviously using also for government services yeah. well, will be where the first step is. Um, so 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 disbursing your welfare. Uh, you know anything that's maybe health related, uh, using the the, the the identity piece, etc. I mean, I envision, I envision a world where you are born with an account. As soon as you register your baby, you have an account in the name of that child, mm -hmm. and already you can receive your government subsidy, education, and things like that. Um, so that having this by default as being financial in, financially included mm. by default as opposed to having to opt into the system right, right, okay. uh, through a lot of friction sometimes, um, I think that is going to be one of the keys to adoption as well. Oh, can, can I just ask a controversial question? Go what? ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you mentioned, you know, um, by default, then, you know, if mm -hmm. a baby is born, it comes with all these uh, accounts and uh, uh, benefits. What if someone opt? wants to opt out is that you know ah that's that a good all? question uh, maybe more for the policy makers than, 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 than for me um, or maybe you could just have it and not use it but yeah, I think that's true. I think it's that's true uh, that's yeah true. I think when it comes to really found, uh, fundamental infrastructure like your your identity um, you know your ID number your um, uh, your existence in the healthcare system and all that, those are things that you yeah, probably wouldn't quite want to opt out of. Yeah, so, no, you're right. So, yeah, so. Yeah. No, you're right. It's a, it's a wider sort of pro policy question, I think, um, which requires a much bigger discussion than the podcast or time that we have today. Yeah, but so. those are very interesting questions nonetheless, right? Is how, how do we make that technology, that technology is never the issue, how do you make the technology really meaningful Mm. For, for the end users, right, your everyday people. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like the privacy uh, question, right? Uh, we allow, well, the GDPR now by default is, you know, 
you requires consent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yes. I consent to mm -hmm. participate in your sort of ecosystem. Yeah. So maybe that's something to consider as well. Absolutely. But yeah, and that the right to be forgotten as part of GDPR correct. is very yeah. important because traditionally blockchains are immutable. Uh, so we, we have uh, what we call controlled mutability. Um, so we're able to revoke a credential as if it never existed. So uh, that's one thing that, that I think is quite compliance friendly in terms of one of the header features that um, is usually well received uh, in, in the framework of GDPR. Yeah, I, w I want to ask you a wider question about, you know, all this uh, blockchain technology and how different it is, but I'm just very conscious of the time and we don't have much time today. So, um, yeah, so what do you think the next steps are in, for CBDC in general? Oh, I mean... I think that's a very it, broad question, it, it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and also the different governments and central banks are in the different stages that's in their right. evolution. So there's a... The past few years, there's been a lot of trialing, POCs, yep. and, and then now getting into more uh, a second phase of um, testing it out with real money, testing it out with um, fintech players within the ecosystem. Um, and and the, the rollouts have been kind of few and far between, right? But I think uh, it's interesting to see it's the emerging economies that are going faster than the more traditional that's right, that's right. Uh, yeah. established mm -hmm. players, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which tells me something, one, there's less legacy layers, and two, there is more, there is more to win, right? There's more to benefit from uh, because, because there's less infrastructure. Um, so I would say I think we'll be seeing more rollouts. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think the, the more established economies will take longer. They do more research, they, they do more observation, and they maybe put more... Um, effort in their frameworks. Yeah, there needs to be some sort of a transition right. planning yeah. as well, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, it's, it's not a small endeavor. This is very core infrastructure. Um, uh, but it's good to see uh, a number of central banks being very proactive about, about this and also beginning to think about, hey, what are we doing, uh, what we're doing uh, on a domestic level? How are we going to connect that with the bigger picture in terms of, say, cross-border payments? How do we make sure that we're not creating silos and that you know, we can have interact, uh, intercompatibility with other CBDCs? Um, so it, seeing these, uh, uh, these mm. projects uh, uh, you know, being, uh, being trialed already, yeah. uh, Enbridge and, and things like that. Um, so that's one of the next stages, I would say, is like you know, thinking beyond uh, the domestic adoption, but also thinking about how that connects with that's the right, greater yeah. fintech ecosystem. Right, yeah. Um, so what do you think are the first countries then to actually, you know, go beyond the prototyping, to go uh, live? I mean, but I think one I'm of the first ones, you know, was China with the ECNY, yeah, right? That's, right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. the one that was most talked about. And then uh, uh, some, some African countries like uh, the Inaira in, in, um, in Nigeria. And there's, and there's more that... that um, Right. have gone beyond uh, just yeah. the testing, right? Right, so, yeah. Uh, I, I'm definitely, we're definitely seeing more out of Africa, and, and uh, uh, MTech is, is quite active in West Africa in general, so beyond Ghana is working with uh, other central banks in West Africa. Uh, we're seeing some adoption in the Caribbean as well. Um, so, so yeah, I think we're, we're definitely going to see more. Uh, it's of course maybe not a transformation that's as fast as um, you would you would like to see it, but everything in a regulated space, especially for this kind of core infrastructure, does take time, and sometimes it's trial and error. Yeah. So for for our one takeaway for our audience, then what do you what would you say to our audience? You know to watch out for. Yeah, that's that's that's. I think more rollouts, obviously, and to see how things go from, from there. But yeah, definitely watch out for uh, more um, um, intercompatibility between, uh, uh, between CBDCs, that there will be payment networks that are, uh, that are being prepared right now and like, that are mainly like in sandbox mode. But there are definitely cross-chain payment networks that are preparing to accept CBDCs across different networks. Yeah. Uh, as well as stable coins, so we'll oh, yes, have a mix right, of, of stable yeah. coins and CBDCs. Mm, it's quite exciting. Um, you'll be able to atomically swap those. That's right. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think that's going to be one of one of the key changes, and is going to be very disruptive to existing remittance uh, to the existing remittance ecosystem. 
I think there's a lot of stuff that we can cover, but it's just, you know, we're running out of time. Talking about remittances, that's also a oh, that's whole new... new pain point, yeah, that's, right? that's right, so that, yeah. That, that, I think yeah. it's a low-hanging fruit there, but yeah. it's a very meaningful one. Yes, yeah, that's right, yeah. So I'm really excited to see, you know, how the... Well, the digital and the crypto-native uh, generation, they probably would, you know, accept this without a second thought. But for my parents or, you know, um, even my own generation, maybe we have a little bit of a barrier to overcome to adopting something that, you know. I think at the end of the day, the, the, the user experience should be the same um, with CBDCs as other forms of digital money. Yeah. Right, so the idea for a successful rollout is to keep it, to keep it easy. Um, so hopefully that's something that will lower the, the, the uh, resistance to adoption. Right, yeah, so hopefully the next time we meet that we can, you know, exchange on our mobile phone uh, uh, CBDC. Uh, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So thank you so All much right. for your time today, Thanks Sabrina. a lot, Jane. Thank you. Pleasure.